in the Bass Tournament yesterday, Saturday, March 28, 1992. Talk to me, Brian. <laughs> Tell us what happened. Huh? You came in second place? Yes. And what was your total winning? That's wonderful, Brian. Thank you so much for your interview. There's the prize finish. You gotta mount it? Yes. Well, that's wonderful. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can see that far all the way down, like, let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me go get let me get ready. I'm going to go use the potty right quick. I'm gonna okay. I'll be back. You, you're going to drive you over there? Yeah, take me over there. <laughs> Heck yeah. You going to that one? Uh, yeah, because it'd be a longer ride. Oh, oh boy. Uh, I'm sending Dave Maxfield down now. We went about seven miles down the river. And obviously you could see just about like you could can here, maybe not hardly as good as it is here in the basin, but. So we start day four on a fog delay. Safety is always first priority in these events. And uh, obviously if it's real foggy out on the river, we can't see. And with a bunch of boats running around, we don't know what's out there to run into. So Bill Taylor made the decision for us to have a fog delay on, on, the, on the last and final day. I don't think I've ever felt so good about a day of fishing on that last day. It was, I was so calm. I, I can't explain what it felt like. I was just like, yep, going fishing today and got this guy with a big camera in my boat that's going to kind of document what's going on today. I thought the camera guy being in the boat would kind of freak me out a little bit. Even though, you know, I kind of fool with the camera stuff and YouTube a lot, I thought that would kind of make me uptight. I got out there and it just literally felt like I was just hanging out. I almost didn't even feel like I was in a tournament on that last day. Leading the charge going into this final day on Championship Sunday. Let's hear from b -Lat, Brian Latimer. tight and, and real nervous about how it was going to go down on last last day. I knew how I was fishing. I knew where I was going to go. I had one bait, two baits that I was going to fish. And I was either going to do whatever I did there. I'm not, I wasn't really scared of losing. I wasn't really scared of losing my lead or not finishing well in the tournament. I just want to get down there to my areas and fish my places. That's all I wanted to do that day. So I think that calmed me down. I wasn't near as nervous 
as I expected myself to be leading an FLW Tour event going into the final day. Is he dead? <laughs> I hit that fish so hard. I locked up on him so hard that he just came up dead. He just laid, he's like, all right, dude, 125, you can have it. Just get your money out of me today. <laughs> oh, man. Still doing the deal. Now that fish looks to be a little bit post -pawnish. The first fish of the morning. That's me screaming. <laughs> I have to be quiet today because I gotta save some voice for stage. What little bit of, I'm like on 20% voice right now. You can catch two more like that out here because that's the kind that's out here right now. That's what's out here. This is Shaking my head, but he did dog me out a little bit. Dude, it's gonna get good this afternoon. My head's in the right place. My boat's in the right place. You know, I I was just having fun in this event. I honestly was having fun catching fish the way I like to catch them, doing stuff I like to do them, using baits that I like to use. It was almost like I was out there just playing with them. And it did not get serious for me. I didn't get nervous. I didn't really feel the pressure until I started to lose a few fish on the last day. I gotta be ready though, that last one, that last bite I had. He tried to break my heart. Dude, that's freaking... Oh! That was kind of cool though, wasn't it? That was a giant, dude. <laughs> that was a freaking giant. <laughs> but when I lost that big one, that hurt a little bit. The most I caught was the first day where I, I got on a little deal cranking and I caught a bunch of fish the first day. On days two, I probably caught eight or nine keepers. Day three, I think I caught maybe seven keepers or so. And you know, I know when I get a bite, I gotta, I gotta get that bite in the boat. I'm getting quality, so if I get bit, I want to catch a four plus pound fish. But when I lost that big one, that hurt a little bit. I, I, I can say, like I kind of started to have that feeling like, you know, that winning thing is for everybody else, not really for me. Dang, dude. Oh. 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 God loves me. 
me. God loves me. Oh my freaking God, dude. Holy f holy freak, dude. Dude, dude. I missed three of them, but look at that hook. It wasn't coming off. Dude, that's a freaking giant. That thing almost pulled me in the lake, dude. Did you see? I couldn't even, I tried to go back and get the net. It was like, no boy, you got to go this way. <laughs> ah. Thank you. Oh, baby. Yes. Oh my God, dude. Oh. Dude, I was so discouraged. I was so discouraged, I was ready to go. I was like, dude, you, you just need to leave this area. <laughs> I've lost, I lost a five pounder. <clears throat> Earlier I flipped in there, set up on him, I lost a five pounder. <sighs> 10 minutes later, I flipped in another head, set the hook boat up, lost him, never saw that one. You know, that's, everybody means so much. I went a long period without catching any fish, no bites, no nothing. Two hours plus, you know, 12, 30 or so, I'd only had three fish in the boat and I'd lost two. This thing should have been over around 11 o'clock, uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock on day four. And here I was at 12, 30, 12, 45 with, with three fish in the live well. And I had a, a span of two hours with no bites at all, zero bites, never swung once. And I wanted to kind of just mentally reset. I wanted to go away and do something else. I wanted to just take my mind off of it. A lot of times I feel like if you leave a project and come back to it later, your mind is fresh, everything seems fresh. Another thing, I just wanted to kind of get all, off the top of my fish. because so even though I knew where I was gonna catch them, just moving around, I feel like you kind of push those fish off the places where I was fishing. I 
you first flip at the time the that was absolutely just come on. devastating but i lost those two sight fishing back to back it was it really i really i wanted to cry i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not gonna be too big of a man to tell you like i, I just i really wanted to cry only reason i didn't really mentally break down is being on live at that time the live cameras are still rolling and i and i, I break down in, inside i'm literally melting after losing those two. It's like 12, 15, 12, 30. Or, or we're actually, it's, it's one. It's after one o'clock at this point and I decide the best way for me to finish the day is spend good time on that flat flipping. An hour flipping grass is a long time because if you get in that right little area, it can happen real fast. I've seen that. I get back to my flat and uh, immediately within 10 minutes, I catch my fourth keeper. Still alive, baby. Still alive, baby. Still alive, baby. Still alive, baby. Let's go. Still alive, baby. Still alive, baby. First it is dope, bro. They said they leave nothing on the table. They made me stress today, man. God, I've never been so stressed in my life. At least I know I got five. They're not big enough quite yet. But it's 1.30 and we got five. Oh. <laughs> Holy crap. It's the most stressed I've ever been in my life. Oh. About two years ago, it was a thought process that came to me one day. I was having a bunch of bad tournaments. It was, it was starting to, to wear on my mind a little bit after having so many bad tournaments because I knew I was putting in the work. I practice a lot at home. I'm a, probably a true fisherman. I fish for fun. It's not exhausting for me to practice at home. When I fish at home on Lake Hartwell, I pretend in my mind that $100,000 is on the line. So there's nothing for me to go out three, four days in a row and try to put together something that I would think would potentially win a hypothetical tournament that would be going on for that week. I do that all the time at home. For two days at a time, three days at a time, and I just want to see what's the best I can do competing against myself on my home order. I do that all the time. So I've, I'm saying all that to say I've seen what I can do. I know I know what I'm capable of. And for a period of time, I was not living up to that. My results was not resembling what I knew I could do in my mind. And I came up with this, this, uh, this term hit me one day called adversity is dope. Uh, because I started to realize, you know, how much of an advantage that I had. I grew up with both parents in my home. Uh, I grew up fishing tournaments. Um, you know, I had all the tools that I needed to be a really good tournament angler. And for whatever reason, there was just, I wasn't seeing the fruit just in the end. It was kind of discouraging. But the more I started to study people that were really good at, the, at any sport, whether it be professional bass fishing, football, basketball, singing, musicians, etc. I noticed they also, they always had this overwhelming adversity they had to overcome to get to wherever they were. Sometimes that was disabilities. And I noticed that they were doing a lot more with their life than I was doing. 
that is somewhat embarrassing to me. Sometimes the things, even though I had so much, the things that I didn't really have ended up being my muscle. It made me strong, made me the person who I am today. And I started to realize, dude, adversity is where it's at. That, that's where it's at. I came in feeling pretty good knowing that I had five and I knew I had at least 20 pounds. I, I knew I had that. I knew Braxton was catching mega bags and there were some rumors flying around way in that Sheldon Collins had a really big bag, like 23, 24 pound bag, which usually means if somebody says they have 23, 24, they usually probably have 25, 26. So I got news of that and I heard that his total was somewhere in the 82, 83 pound mark and I knew I didn't have that. So I didn't really feel deflated, but I did feel like, well, you know, you did the best you can, get up there, smile, do whatever you can. Well, Sheldon weighed before I did. Oh, God. We got a beer. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I left it all in the water, I never missed any fish today. I put it in glass hands and I put it in What size weight on the palmetto? Do you want any other uh, gear, uh, like so rod, reel, yeah, yeah, that's right. 72 favorite rig series. But next up, part of the Yoziri Pro Style, he is from Montgomery, Alabama. He's a former Pulling Reports champion on the FW Tour. He's already made one top 30. We've got three guys left, man, and you're getting ready to go back and forth pretty much all day long on that leaderboard. And, uh, and just your composure, man, for a 21 year old, I'm not going to call you a kid. Got you, Mr. Latimer. I've been watching on TV. I see what you did. For a 21 year old angler, man, that's a. Uh, this is uh where it gets real man all right, so Sheldon Collins uh, will fall to second place, and we've got one guy left. So this is, uh, this is our crowning moment, man. It's a TV-making moment for us, and so we're getting ready to bring up our leader coming into this day. He led Braxton Setzer by one pound, ten ounces. All right, so if you watched it today on FLW Live, we saw a lot of drama, good and some tough moments for him. We're going to see how this shakes out. $125,000 first place prize on the line. Are you going to help us make some TV? Can we make some television? Bainbridge! All right, man, it is that time. I tell you what, Braxton, come, uh, come back to the stage, man. This is our TV-making moment. So from Belton, South Carolina. He is a professional that started his career in 2008. And he is one of those guys that is lighting up the social media in the professional bass fishing. He had 19 one on day one. He had 17 on day two. He had 23 pounds even yesterday was the second heav heaviest bag of day three behind only the leader, Braxton Setzer. This is showtime. You ready to get this thing done? Put them on the scales, boy. Let's do this. Let's do this, yeah. B-Lat. Yeah. We're we're hey, is this your family here? Family. These fish are in water. They're good. They don't want to talk. Let's weigh. <laughs> no, they want to talk. You they don't, don't want to talk. Let's weigh. <laughs> <laughs> Giving me some love. All right, man, here we go, B-Lat. You need, for the win, I know what I need. 19 pounds, 2 ounces. B-Lat, you're making me nervous. There's number one. That one goes 215. Number two is a good one. 
Watch it with me, Braxton. That one go <laughs> That one goes we're up to six two, six two. You're looking for nineteen two. Number three. So you've got three right now that go 10-8. You're looking for 19-2. If you've got four and five, let's see them. Yes, sir. I got you. He said, I want to be cool when I bring them out. Wow! Wow! A five-pass limit! A five best limit for B Lat, South Carolina's Brian Latimer, getting it done on Championship Sunday. Woo! All right. Braxton, watch it with me. B Lat, watch it with me. You need 19 2 for the win. Here we go. A five best limit for South Carolina's Brian Latimer, worth. 21 pounds, three ounces. Your champion is Brian Latimer. Wow! Woo! B Lat gets it done on Championship Sunday. Woo! When I brought those two, two last ones out of the live wheel. Dude, it was, uh, it was the most free moment I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know how, I have no other words to explain that. It was the most satisfying, free moment that I probably ever will experience, ever. Just because of the road that I traveled to get to that moment. A five best limit. We're twenty-one three. Earns Brian Latimer his first victory on the FLW tour. Woo! And to present the winning check and trophy, B Lat, the Costa FLW Tour Pro Anglers. Todd Castledine and Russell Cecil. Russell? Man, you're making me emotional. On behalf of Costa Sunglasses, I'm excited to present you with the first place check. So the check is passed off by the Coastal Pro, Russell Cecil. You are $100,000 richer, Brian Latimer. An emotional Brian Latimer. The most satisfying part of this, this, uh, this tournament, there, there's, there's several that I could talk about forever. The number one thing I think for me was my dad being able to be there to see me win, to get, saying all that to say, there was a lot of rub in my teens and 20s when I decided to take fishing serious. And I think that just came out of love, wanting me to see me do good, see me do good in life and have a good career. Bass fishing is not easy. It's not, it's very easy to do very poorly in life financially doing the, the professional bass fishing route. It's just the truth. I don't like announcing that, but it's a very narrow path and very few people do well with fishing. Think about it, in the entire world, the entire globe, there's three, less than 300 anglers that make a living tournament fishing. And I decide that I want to do that. So I can understand why maybe there was a little bit of pushback. But I was glad he got to see that because now we, he knows that I'm gonna be okay. Like, I can do this. The seed that you planted didn't go to waste. Next, to present the winner's trophy, 
the money spins, but the trophy lasts forever. It's Todd Castledine. He'll pass that off. He is your champion. $100,000 richer is Brian Latimer. All right, man, let me get in there. Hey, don't go anywhere because uh, Eric Jackson's getting getting ready to give away some stuff. But uh, I love it, man. I love you, buddy. You know, I got a message from uh, Ron Lappin last night, and I showed you that this morning. And it said, Bill Taylor, so proud of you. That's passion for this game, man. That's a love for the sport. And hey, listen, before uh, before we do anything else, that's your weight ticket. You may want to frame that thing. You gotta have, I didn't have I didn't have a lot of that. What people say you need to have to be a champion on the professional level, I didn't have a lot of that stuff. And that adversity is dope term. I wanted to prove it real life in real time that it's real. It's not just a cute cliche term that you can say you know, when you're having hard times, it's something that you can take to the bank. It's true. If you trust the process, I wanted to prove that, that you can start with nothing in America and be at the top if you're willing to sacrifice what it takes. I wanted to prove that with my life and with my career. And so winning, I think, is the best testament to that.